Anthony, take a dab of some bacon. 3.59 a.m. It's honestly not that bad, but some of us are having a little bit of a rougher start than others. So no, it's sick. great. I'm feeling good. Now you have... So pumped. through security. Uh, how was the experience? It was good. It was way faster than COVID-19. So, step up your game. The Denmark. only good thing about a 7 a.m. flight is that the security line is quite manageable. It's true. We're in the chapel of the Oslo airport. Gotta do devotional. <laughs> Quality control check. Oh, yep, good quality flight. <laughs> we met our new guide, Yama, who quickly became our favorite of the trip. We have a nice trip into Savannah. It will take approximately 15 minutes until we are there. I heard that you had a very early wake up this morning. I'm so sorry. I feel so sorry for you. Really? I'm just kidding. Don't feel sorry for you. <laughs> Listen, I just called the hotel uh, and I said to them, 
please give them some breakfast? And he said, you are welcome. Yay! So let's go and have some food before we are going on the expedition today. Wow. Yes. This morning, we woke up at 3 in the morning to go to the airport. So we get to the airport and I have to check two bags instead of one. And on the way to the counter, there's about like, I don't know, a hundred people. No, okay. There's like 20 people probably. <laughs> I get to the front of the line and the lady just leaves. So I'm like, great. Then I get to go, have to go to the security line. And the security line is, is like maybe three miles long. And the guy behind me smelled like absolute crap. They pull my bag over. They check everyone else's bag. Um, and then they just, they see mine and just walk away from me. Uh, they were taking the chandy. At this point, it's uh, 15 minutes till we uh, take off. With five minutes left, I, uh, I got a sandwich. The sandwich had sesame seeds on it. I am uh, highly allergic to sesame seeds. <laughs> I didn't notice until after I ate so so it. Yeah. Are you okay? <laughs> no, I was, I was just nauseous on the plane. Uh, here I am, it's only 9.40 in the morning. Amen, brother. I could say anything right now, and you would believe me. Try. Orange. Facts. Told you. You know, some people are in a bad mood. Some people don't want to be here. Some people have had a bad experience this morning, but sometimes you just gotta look at yourself and say, today is gonna be a good day. And today is gonna be a good day. Why? Because I manifested it. What day is today? 946. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> it's just a good day, man. <laughs> it's a good day. That's all that matters. <laughs> today is a good day. I don't care what the date is, I don't care what time it is. It's 9.46. I don't care where I am, today's gonna be a good one. Because I said so. With a cup of coffee in my hand. After our nourishing breakfast, we hit the road for our first site visit. A startup called Vorn, where we learned about the business environment in Norway and Scandinavia. We're at Bourne <laughs> Equipment. And we're meeting with Roar. <laughs> but we talked to some guy who owns Bourne. He makes backpacks that carry shotguns. We got some sandwiches that I haven't eaten, but that it looks very good. Look at that. Fantastic. Like oh, some of the best sandwiches I've ever had. Oh, we had a good breakfast. Salmon. Maybe we'll get some salmon. I've had three hallucinations today. <laughs> we woke up at 3 a.m. This is the same day. We're about to taste Norway in the form of chocolate. Subtle. It's spectacular. I love Norway. Norwegian chocolate. Then we drove across town for our briefing on salmon. You can leave everything in the bus, but I can't assure you that everything is there when you come. Because me and Eamon, we love to check everything. Just kidding, just kidding. You will be safe with us, okay? <laughs> There, we got to meet with a representative from Cargill, Tor Andre, who brought in several wonderful speakers to talk about aquaculture. How are we doing? We're doing great. Check out this Oreo. It's Batman. It's a Batman Oreo. How long are we going to be here? Four hours. We heard from how many speakers? Three or four? Uh, all related to aquaculture, which I find very interesting uh, as exploring, you know, alternative food options. We're learning about the different kind of aqu aquaculture systems with open systems and closed. Eight out of ten. Let me fill you in here. And then and what's happening right now. We are currently at Cargill and we've been here for two hours already listening to presentations. It's all about fish. <laughs> I want to go to bed but today's a good day. I guess. It is a good day. That's, that's my update. On our way back, we drove past a monument to the unification of Norway and the Battle of Hafsfjord, which was celebrating its 1150th anniversary that weekend. Would you like to go out and have photos or would you like to go to the hotel? 
All I have to say about myself is that I'm incredibly exhausted. I like fish though a lot, I must say. I don't love the idea of them all smushed into a tank together, but apparently if their gills flutter a little bit and they, they swim around, that means they're happy. We're all very happy here at the restaurant because they got our order perfectly correct. We're not even going to be able to hear anything we say in the music of the Review of this place, Hans and Hernet. Bad. Bad. I'm going to get us back to our hotel without directions. I you better be ready. It was a very good night of sleep. And I, I, I was in bed from 8 o'clock to 7 um, 20. We're going to the actual salmon farm. Yesterday we heard about salmon profusely. Like, I can't process right now, honestly. Wow! <laughs> Seventh grade me is absolutely dying right now. to a presentation from Tor. I don't know his name, but we talked about feed and we talked about where the salmon swim and live and now we're gonna go see it. We saw how fish goes from egg to plate. Um, and basically, we're taken through that process. Uh, fish per cage. So these will be harvested within maybe one or two months. You can see this kind of blue uh, blue uh, pipes here is where the feet are blowing from the silos. And that's why the, the quality of the pellet is so important. Mm. Because if that start to pulverize, the fish are not eating that. Yeah. So you're losing that. I do. I do several. You can't show them that clip from Nemo where all the fish sit together. <laughs>
Yeah, if you show them that one clip, they tear industry glasses. <laughs> Hey vlog, just balancing <laughs> five spoons. <laughs> nice. Is 12 not enough? One more, one more, one more, one more. I know, it's five dollars in the end. Okay, good. Yeah. 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 Next, we were ferried to the other side of the fjord, where we got to inspect a state-of-the-art take on aquaculture technology. We are going to the fish orb. Uh, I'm really excited. They implemented the orb idea and just added fish to it. The two globes you have uh, outside here uh, is uh, mainly for plasma production. So meaning that we take the fish uh, up to approximately one kilo and it goes up to open traditional farming. The point of that is you reduce the time it is in open sea, so it's uh, less uh, exposed to sea lice. Uh, shorter time means quicker money, also for the farmer. It's actually the largest construction in the world that's built in uh, thermoplastic. No, we went to what is it called? Oh, fish oh, oh, so, like oh, yeah. it, it's a fish tank that goes 20 meters down, and there's a control oh, like, room, a and like the edge on the other side, and like two <laughs> like, spots underneath, and it's all enclosed. <laughs> yeah. and so we got to see the fish. There's quite a few wounds. She saw a fish die. Circle of life. It was fun. It definitely gave Spatia vibes. Put on wings! Andrew was back, so the party's about to start. Is there someone else? Despite our exhaustion, the two days of aquaculture site visits in Stavanger ended up being some of our most informative of the whole trip. And in addition to hearing the amazing information from Tor Andre and the rest of the Cargill team, our group was also incredibly excited to drive through the world's longest and deepest undersea road tunnel, the Riedfrika Tunnel, on our way back to Stavanger that evening.